water smell funny to you? I'm pretty sure I've got like some kind of water test somewhere. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go pH test this. Give me that. These batteries are not safe to throw away in the garbage. Don't you know that's hazardous waste? That's like the same thing as throwing away a car battery. I'll call the hazardous hotline. Don't worry, I got them on speed dial. Do you think our county will take this kind of plastic and recycle it? I'm gonna check it. We definitely can't go outside right now. The air quality index says it's not safe. Hello, hazardous hotline. Yeah, I got a question for you. Yeah, this is, this is Amari. Like calamari. Yeah, the one that likes squid. Yep, I got another question. Environmental engineering covers questions just like these every day. And I'm gonna tell you why you should become an environmental engineer. My name is Amari Walker, and I am a doctoral student at Duke University studying environmental engineering. And before we begin, I'd like to welcome all new folks to my channel. If you could press the like button and subscribe, that would be awesome. Okay, let's get to it. So first, what is environmental engineering? Environmental engineering is just a branch of engineering that is focused on protecting humans from adverse environmental effects like pollution and improving overall environmental quality. These topics can range from water quality, air quality, waste management, and even erosion. So it's quite an array. What do you need to study? Environmental engineering is so great because it combines all different kinds of disciplines of science in math and engineering. So that includes classes in mathematics, biology, chemistry, geology, hydrology, and now we're gearing into sectors like doing computer science work, handling big data, doing data science itself. Just so many disciplines and so many opportunities to expand into all forms of science and be very interdisciplinary. Does that mean that you have to do all of those things? No, not necessarily. I think I would say as a personal environmental engineer, I focus mostly on chemistry, math, maybe a little bit of biology, uh, and coding, lots of coding. What can you do with this degree? If you graduate with a degree in environmental engineering, whether that's a bachelor's or a graduate program, there are tons of options for you to choose what career you wanna go into. You can go through the, you know, the traditional path of becoming a licensed professional engineer, which means that you take the fundamentals of engineering exam and become an engineer in training and later on take your professional engineering exam to become a licensed engineer. As a licensed professional engineer, you can become a consultant or just design in areas of water quality, air quality, waste management, recycling, dealing with hazardous waste sites, you name it. Any of those and above, you can consult and engineer and design to solve a lot of those problems. You can also do something totally different, which is why it's so awesome to be an environmental engineer, because you have just studied in so many disciplines of science. So that makes you very versatile in the career. You could become an official data scientist. You could work as an environmental health and safety director or officer, become a water project manager, or even do something like becoming a green building engineer. So helping to design buildings that are more environmentally friendly for our futures and to prevent all the issues with climate change and overuse of our resources. Not only that, you don't have to stay in the strict field of science. You could veer off and go into work with the government or policy and even go into business. The skills that you gain while learning and studying environmental engineering are very translatable to other fields that can still utilize what you've worked so hard to accomplish. So can everyone be an environmental engineer or scientist, like even in their own community? Do I need a degree in this? No, not necessarily. I think that studying environmental engineering or trying to be a good environmentalist in general is accomplishable. You can be your own community scientist in the realm of environmental science and engineering. How do you do that? Well, the first example that always comes to mind is water quality, because that's what I mainly study. You can look at your own water quality or the water quality of your own community. 
particularly people who are in well systems, they're not necessarily regulated by the Environmental Protection Agency, so they have to do all of their own water quality work and analysis to see if it's safe. You could work in, in those communities, in your own community, to try and understand what the water quality is by looking at your county website's annual water quality report and then comparing it to things like the Environmental Working Group or do your own test kits and try and understand what's happening. If you're curious about your air quality, it's really good to look at the air quality index. I know when I was looking at it during the campfires and you can even look it up during the Australia bushfires, the changes in the air quality significantly changed to the point where it was unsafe for people to go outside and breathe. And I think a lot of people weren't paying as much attention to it as they should because that has long lasting effects on your health. And even people who suffer from respiratory diseases or asthma have to pay a lot of attention to what is the air quality index on a daily basis. So just by checking that, just alongside of your weather, you're doing something that's very important to understanding your environment and the health of your air. I would highly recommend checking the air quality index on a daily basis because it can also determine whether it's safe for you to exercise outside. Other areas of environmental engineering include management of hazardous waste or waste sites. You can look up on your city and county website the locations for dealing with waste that may not necessarily be allowed in your dumpster or landfill. Things like rechargeable batteries or your car battery. There are numbers that you can call to contact them to see if it's safe to dispose of, of certain items in your house, which is always a good idea. Also, it's great to check in with your county waste website because it'll tell you what is recyclable and not. You can advocate as your own environmentalist for them to start working towards recycling more options. The numbers that are associated to things like your bottled water or the bottom of a detergent bottle all determine the type of plastic and every recycling plant has a different method for actually recycling these things and some are not capable of recycling every plastic item that's disposed of. But if we encourage them to become more equipped to handle that, we can better prevent plastic from ending up in our landfills. So why should you do it? Why should you be an environmental engineer? Well, it's great. It allows you the opportunity to work outdoors or indoors with field work to really understand what's happening in our environment and in our water and our air. And it gives you the opportunity to have a long lasting impact on the world. Everyone has a right to clean water, breathable air, a place to properly dispose of their waste that doesn't affect our environment, and having a well-conserved, clean and healthy environment. If you want to be a part of that in any way, this is one of the best ways to do it. So I highly recommend that you think about becoming an environmental engineer, whether that's through formal training and getting a degree, or just being your own community scientist and environmentalist. If you have any questions about that, please post below and I'd love to talk about it. And don't forget to comment and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this video and I can't wait to see you in future videos. Take care.